Good morning, everyone. This week, we're going to be focusing on a listing, specifically pre-listing pre questions, pre-listing packet, listing presentation, marketing plan, and keeping sellers updated. So today, I want to talk to you about the pre-listing questions. And that's assuming that you've already got some type of an appointment to go in and see the home or engage with the seller. And I think this part is one part that we're, we're missing in the sense that we should be doing a better job in the questions that we're asking and the approach. Here's the reason behind it. Now, <clears throat> it can be it can be you who calls or it can be a listing agent that you have on your team or the head admin, but it'll make the process seem more professional because we're gathering information. If you think of, if you think of what we most compare ourselves to in the industry, that's attorneys and doctors, they have a process, right? Before you show up or when you're in the waiting room, they have a questionnaire that you fill out. And in the same way, you're giving a sense of professionalism if you're the one asking questions that can make you seem that more prepared. And so that's the idea behind it, all right? So let's let's get right into it. When you've already set an appointment, what you're gonna to wanna to do either in that conversation or, or a later conversation that day or the following day, depending on where the, when the listing presentation is or the pitch, you're going to want to have a conversation along the lines of, of this, say, look, client or seller, in order for me to better understand your needs and help you, I'm going to ask you a few questions that'll take anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. Is it okay if I, I can call you back tonight or tomorrow? You set that time, right? Or, or I can send you the document for you to fill in and send back to me. But me asking you the questions will go much quicker. So you also want to give them that option as well. I've done that in the past where they go ahead and fill it out. If it's an analytical, they'll love to fill it out and it'll be like 20 pages long. So they can have fun with that. Now, once they say yes and they give you a time, you want to make sure that then you get into it and say, okay, great. I'm going to call you at this time and that time. Great. I'll call you up. All right. So now it's call time. Here are the 22 questions that I've outlined, right? It does take anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how deep you go into it and depending on how they respond. So you can take notes or you can text me later and I can send this to you because I have this on a Google doc. So the first thing is once I once I call you up and I'm going to use Zach as an example because we were talking a little bit. So I'm going to be like, hey, Zach, thanks for taking my call again. Look, I don't want to take more time than needed. Let's get right into it. Uh, can I get your full name, please? And then you'll be like, yeah, my name is Zachariah, blah, 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 whatever his full name is. I say, awesome. All right. So what what's the property address and do you have a separate mailing address that I should be using just in case? Right, we never ask for that mailing address. Sometimes they do have a mailing address over that address. Number three, and I'm going through this really quick because you know if I could be here 30 minutes with you. So number three, uh, you ask, well, are you are you the only owner of the property, or are there multiple owners, maybe two or three? Right, something along the same lines as decision makers, whatever language you want to use there. I usually like to use owners. Number four. Uh, can I get your phone numbers, your your home phone number and your cell phone number? And Zach or Zachariah, is is there a business number that I should have on file? And look, I know I know a lot of us don't use fax anymore, but you know, the IRS still uses it. So I'm going to ask you, do you need me to have a fax number on file for you? And what's your email address? So those, those are the ones. I know people say facts. Well, believe it or not, some people still use facts. All right. So number five, you go into, so tell me, Zach, why are you selling? And if you know it's a corporate move, then you'd be like, well, if, if it's a corporate move, is your company helping you with the move? And you know, in some cases, because we're here at Amgen, they'll help with part of that move and some other big companies will help with part of that move as well. So 
now I still hear a noise in the background. So whoever's listening in, just please do me a favor, mute yourselves. Next one, number six, when do you need to move by? Some of us don't ask that question, or if we do, it's kind of all scattered around. Number six is really important. When do you need to move by? Number seven, uh, would you describe the house for me, Zach? I haven't seen it, but describe it for me. You know, beds, baths, square footage, style, lot, pool. See where they gravitate to and what's most important to them. And that because the next questions kind of follow along the same lines. Number eight is how long have you owned it? Number nine, what sold you on your home when you bought it? Some of us don't ask this question, a very important question as to why it was important to them. This is one question I do ask up front. And I say part of this. So what sold you on your home when you bought it? I say, what features did you love? Because chances are when we put it up on the market, other people may love those features too, whether it's part of the house or an area specifics, right? Very important. Number 10, have you done any updating to the home since you bought it? That's important as well, right? Maybe windows, painting, whatever. Number 11, if you were to stay in the home for another five years, is there anything you would do to it? That's another way of saying what needs to be improved, right? And if you ask it this way, they'll think about it differently as well. And you'll get a more solid answer. Number 12, for a moment, pretend to be a buyer and look at your home through what we call buyer's eyes. On a scale from one to 10, how would you rate its condition? One, poor, 10, model home. What do you think? Tell me, Zach, what do you think? Right, so that's that. Number 13, what would it take for your house to be a 10? That's always assuming that they're not gonna choose a 10, right? Hopefully they're realistic and you're working with a client that will actually sell their home and it'll be like, well, it's a seven or an eight, right? And then they'll give you an answer as to what it would take to be a 10, which is what we're heading for. Because now we're going to use this as ammunition for the future, for the price and where we need to be at. Number 14, what are you going to be asking for your home? Now, when I've asked for the, when I've asked this, most of the time they have an answer. In some cases, they say, well, that's why we're hiring a professional like you to let us know. And that's okay. The idea is to hopefully have them give you a price based on a previous appraisal or they've refinanced or they've gone on Zillow or Redfin and taken a look at what they think their home is worth. Where chances are, with all the tech out there, they have an idea. And you want that idea, right? Because you need to have that up front. You need to know what you're going up against. Number 15, do you own your property free and clear? Right. That's important to see how much they're going to net. Right. Because what are they going to do with the money? Are they going to be able to do some seller financing? What are the what's the situation? Right. If they say, yeah, look, I do own something. I said, awesome. Uh, do you happen to know the balance? We are going to need that. Right. It helps them with the net sheet and all this whole process. Number 16. What are the three things you're looking for in a realtor? I don't think I hear anybody ask this question but then it puts it right in front of your face. What's most important to them? What are they looking for? Chances are it's gonna be a stretch for them to find three. From my experience, they usually find one or two. Number 17, are you getting any other professional opinions on selling your home? Now, now you're talking like a doctor at this point or an attorney, have you gotten anybody else? But instead of saying, hey, are you in, are you interviewing any other real estate agents? You're saying, hey, are you getting any other professional opinions on your home? They say, oh, yeah, we are. Awesome. Uh, do you have an appointment set already? Um, yeah, we do. We have one tomorrow. Great, great. Could you please provide me the names and the times you'll be meeting them? People are like, well, I'm too scared to ask. Well, look, if you don't ask, you won't know. Think of yourself as a professional like we want to be seen. Because if you're a doctor or an attorney, you're going to want to know who, who are these other people. Number 18, have you considered going for sale by owner? Some agency, well, why would you ask that and put it in their head? Well, why not? Because if they thought about it, I want to know up front. 
Number 19, have you sold a property before? Giving you their experience. Do they know? Have they sold 20? Have they sold one? Is this their first time? Number 20, is there anything else I should know about your home? This should jog their memory as to anything else that they may have missed. That maybe you didn't ask a question about their home that they really wanted to tell you that just didn't come up. And under 20, I sometimes ask, depending on if they're out of town, I ask, well, how do I get access to your property? Is there a neighbor? Is there a family member close by? How do I get access at least to get a key? Number 21, do you have any questions for me? And number 22, explain what happens next. A lot of us just hang up. Don't give any expectations as to what's the process after this. People want clarity. The more clarity you give them, the more they can connect with you and say, wow, this person is exactly what I need. They got everything together. So explain to them what happens next. One call, two calls. Is there a pre-listing packet that's going to go to their house? What? And that really wraps up all the questions I've got. So far now, I, I take away and I add questions depending on who I'm talking to. I've already had some answers to this. Uh, so just, just be weary of that. And you can always throw in some, take out some. But that's the idea behind asking questions before you go to a listing. It gives you more leverage. It gives you more power. And it also reconnects you to this person if you're the one calling. Right. So any questions, any comments, anybody want to add anything to this while I have you here?